Yeah, so let's continue here. Now, so far we have a list of schools here, which is awesome. Now, if we go to our um, database here, let's go to school DB. I want to look at the users table. So I'll click on users. And if I move here to school ID, you see that the school ID is empty. Now, the idea here is that each user is going to have a school ID and they're only going to be allowed to see content that corresponds to that school ID. So it means everyone must have a particular school ID at the time whenever they're using the website. So the way we're going to achieve that with our super admins, because we want our super admins to be able to move from school to school, they can easily switch from one school to another, etc. So we're going to add a switch to button here. What that switch to button is going to do is it's going to update this column right here. Now for any other user apart from the super admin, this uh, value in the school ID will be permanent. So it's not going to be changing whatsoever. The only people who have the ability to change the school ID is the super admin. That way they get to see data from any school that they select. What we don't want is for them to see all the data from all schools at one time because that they'll not even be able to make sense of that data. So it's better they move from school to school at a time. So what we will do is add an extra button here called switch to. That way we can switch between schools. So what I will do here is I will go to, um, let's go to our project here. So inside my, uh, let's go to views actually. And I want to look for the schools view right here. Right where we have buttons here, I want to add one extra button. So let's see which one comes last. So I want the, the other one to be last here. So I'm just going to duplicate the delete and change the title to something like switch to. So it actually doesn't have, I won't put any icon here because I don't actually know what icon I can put here. Maybe it can be an arrow, I don't, I'm not sure. Or maybe we can use the chevron here, chevron right, like so. And then let's put the switch, and say switch to as the text. And the color, maybe we can go for success. I don't know, just to keep it easy going there. And then where we are sending this is, we're going to call that switch to, not capital, just switch and Here it's entirely up to you. You can write switch or you can make it more uh, obvious by saying switch scoop like this and save. So let's come back here and refresh the page. So now we have a switch to button here. Okay. And uh, what else can we do? So you can style this as you want. Of course. Now keep in mind that only super admins will be able to see any of this. Now when we click here there's a link at the bottom here that we are looking at. So if I do click on it it's going to go to now oh, it says schools switch schools so that's not good. Uh, let's remove schools here entirely like that. Okay so let's come back and redo that and uh, refresh click on this. Okay, so there we go. So switch school three. We have to add a way to uh, handle a controller not found a little bit better. But for now we have switch school and then we have three there. That's the ID of the school to switch to. 
Now, the issue here is that somebody could send this link right there and then they'd be able to switch to a particular school. So it's very important that we check to make sure that the person that's trying to switch this is actually an admin, a super admin in this case. So not only do we hide the switch, the button, we must keep in mind that they can just type the URL directly. So we have to account for that as well. So we have the button here, that's all good. If you want to make it even more uh, not so easy to do, because here somebody can just add whatever ID they want and try to switch to that school. So you can change this to, to use the URL address or the school ID as it is known instead of this. But we'll leave it for now here. We can still make it secure even like that. So I'm going to go to controller and inside our controller, I want to find the simplest controller, which is probably like the logout controller. I will copy everything in here and create a new controller, paste it, save that, and I'll call it switch underscore school because I want to match what's in the URL. So save and then same thing here. This is the class switch underscore school. You can call it change school. Okay. So let's do change school controller. So the logout, what the logout does is it uh, logs the user out, but this is not what we want. So I'm just going to um, remove this. Now, what we can do is we can, okay, let me undo that a little bit. What we can do is we can use the oath to handle this kind of thing. So let's go to our models and give the oath a few more functions here. So since it's already dealing with the session data, we can just uh, extend what it is doing. So let's see here. I'm going to copy all of this. In fact, let me just copy all of this. Paste. Since this is the authority, so we're just going to say switch scoop, just so we know what it's switching. And then we'll give an ID of the school that we want to switch to. Alrighty then. This means in the controller here, we're just going to say auth switch scoop. And then we're going to give the ID. So we'll receive an ID from here. But let's remember to keep it optional like that, just in case. And then we'll give the ID here. Then we're going to redirect back to schools. Okay, and that's it for this part. Let's come back to the oath and make sure that switch school actually does what we want. So we don't need to return anything. So we're just going to leave that. It doesn't really matter. So is set, if is set this, so if this is not set, then nothing will happen. But we just don't want to check if this is set. We want to make sure that this is a super admin. So let's put another and right here and say and session user. Uh, Let's come back to our table so we can see what we're looking for. Here, what we are looking for is the rank super admin. So let's make sure that the rank is super admin. So rank is equal to super underscore admin. So if both of those things are correct, then it means we are able, we should be able to switch. So right in here, we're just going to get the user class. So I will say user is equal to new user. That way we can read from the users table. So I will copy this and just say, uh, uh, wait a second. So what I want to change is the rank here. So I'm just going to create an array and say rank like so 
is equal to, okay? Oh, sorry, it's not the rank we're cha changing, it's a school ID. We would have made a grave mistake. So, the school ID we want to change to is the one that we will get from this ID right here. So, th whatever the school ID of this is, that's what we want to add here. So then it means let's get our row from there. Again, you could say row is equal to user, and let's say uh, user uh, where, and then we're using the ID. Let's put our ID there, like so. So it's going to return a row if things go well. So I will copy this and say if row like this which means a result was brought back let's move that below then uh, let me move this to in there we don't need to return anything but we can return true let me remove that as well okay so Everything here should happen in there because we should only do something if we did return a result. So row, now this row will need to be equal to row zero because we want to get the very first item. So never forget that this returns an array of a row, of rows. So we just want to get, even though it's one result, but we want to get just the first one. So we should make a version that does this for us internally, so we don't have to do this all the time. We can change it to where, row, or something like that. And copy exactly the code, except we add this thing extra in there. So we have a row that is valid. So I'm going to say um, this school ID will be equal to that row. And let's go to schools though, and let's see what we named that id so it's still school id in there as well so school underscore id so we're getting the school id and adding it to our array that way we can add this array when we are inserting so we're just going to say user update and then we'll give our id Okay, so we are not updating the ID that came in here. We're updating our own ID. So we're going to get that ID from in here. So I'm going to copy this. Actually, yeah, that's the ID we need. So this is the current selected user's ID. And then comma, we want to put the array of data that we want to update. So comma over there. Alrighty then, so user update, what is this? This is useless code. Okay, so let's recap a little bit what we are doing here. So first of all, we are checking to see if the person is an actual super admin, that should not be compromised. And then we're going to create a new instance of the user class. Then in here we'll read uh, from the user Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. This is actually not correct. We're supposed to read from the school here. Okay, so we have to instantiate another class here called the school. And let's put school here as well. So that wasn't right. So we should use the school to read because so far what we have is just the ID of the school, but we need its school ID which is this one right there. So it would have been easier if we had sent this in the URL, but this is okay as well. It's just better to confirm that it actually exists before we try to assign it. So if we read from the school and the row is correct, so that's the row for the school, then we can add the school ID to our array, which we're going to update in the user. Okay, so that's the user. The current user has the ID of this one, which is the, yeah. And then on top of that, we have to update the session variable as well. So once we 
do this, okay? Now, I'm not even sure if this returns true or false. So let me just confirm that in the core. Oh, not in the core. This is in the user model. So let's go and see how that will work. Actually, not in there. It's in the model model. So in the core main model, let's see here. I want to go to the updates. Okay, so it doesn't return. Uh, yeah, it does return true or false. Okay, that's that's good because query does return true or false. Does it not? Let's see here. Where is the query? The query is in the database table. So there we go. So this one returns false or returns the data. But uh, it doesn't return true or false if things go well, does it not? Mm -hmm. So if the statement is true and we execute here, if the check was correct, at this point, we must return true. So let's add return true here. Just so that if it's a um, something that doesn't require to return a result, at least it will return true. Okay, that's it. Minor adjustment there in the database. So now that we know this can return true or false, we can put that in an if statement. That way, only if we manage to update this, do we update the session data as well. So copy this, let's put an if statement here and say if, like so, write it then. So I should have done the same thing here. So instead of having to do this, I can move all this into there like this. Same thing, write it then. So if that, then here, uh, user ID, bah, bah, bah. if that works, then let's update the session school ID as well. Should be equal to, uh, what do we equate this to? It's equal to that right there. Okay. Alrighty then, that is good. Let me come back here and uh, let's refresh. So we have an error here. So let's fix that. Syntax error, unexpected token on line 64 in oath. So we're 64 right here. So it's that one right there. So let's remove that and let's refresh. Alrighty then, things are looking good. So let's uh, check to see if the switching is happening in the next video.